Good afternoon. Um, so I'd like to uh, spend a few minutes and kind of describe a little bit about the University Research Corridor and um, share a few lessons that um, we've learned over the last few years and give you a couple of examples of some collaborations that we've uh, started that we think are on the right trajectory and the right path um, and hopefully give you uh, a little insight into um, our organization and maybe how it can translate to some of the things you're considering with the Civic Engagement Corridor. Um, and I really like this quote from Ralph Waldo Emerson, you know, do not go where a path may lead, go instead where there's not a path and leave a trail. If this was easy, if this was simple, there'd be a book that is on the bestsellers list that's the seven steps and if you just follow those sequentially over six months you will have a successful partnership and everyone will be happy. It's not easy. It's difficult. I think you've heard it from a number of the panelists before me. So a little bit about the URC, our 30-second elevator pitch. Um, the URC is one of the top nations leading technology innovation clusters in the nation uh, and a leading economic engine here in the state of Michigan and the Great Lakes region. It's collaboration between MSU, U of M, and Wayne State University created by the three presidents in 2006 uh, with the assembly of the following significant pieces. These three institutions collectively produce over 32,000 graduates annually, have over $2 billion in research and development activities on an annual basis, contribute over $16 billion in net economic activity to our state's economy, and over 19% of the alumni from these three universities have started at least one company. So these are huge economic engines um, that contribute to our state and can help in terms of driving our state forward. So as I was thinking about the presentation today, I thought, well, let's go back and look at kind of what this whole thing is about collaboration. And so I, I looked at the definition and, you know, talks about working with another person or group to achieve or do something. Um, but I've heard of another definition, an unnatural act by unconsenting adults. Anybody heard that, that term before? I mean, it's not necessarily a natural thing for collaboration, um, at least in some parts of Michigan, in some parts of our state, in some parts of our nation. Um, you know, it's not something that is just kind of a natural thing that we do. So let me share with you a few lessons learned uh, or lessons learning because I don't think we've necessarily learned all of these lessons um, in our brief period as the University Research Corridor. And first, collaboration isn't easy, it takes time. Um, I think you've heard a number of people talk about this, and, and it's all about trust, right? Collaboration all boils down to do you trust the people that you're collaborating with or thinking about collaborating with? My wife and I have two daughters, and, and we think about you know, collaboration in you know, terms of our children, in terms of relationships. You know, I think about it in terms of things like you, know, you don't start you know, collaborations by getting engaged. You start by you know, dating, right? You go to a dance, and you meet other people. And then maybe you go on a first date, and then maybe you, know, you go steady, and then maybe you get engaged, and then you get married. And sometimes those marriages don't work out, or those engagements don't. And that's a lot like collaboration. You know, it's, it's a progress and a step that, that develops this, and it takes some time. It takes some energy. You know, the second is it can't be a zero-sum game. By that I mean the whole has to be greater than the sum of the parts. Because if, if it's just about trying to assemble existing parts, you know, then you get into this whole issue of 
you know, well, am I going to lose something? Am I going to give something up in order for someone else to gain from that? You know, it, the collection or the assembly of these partnerships really have to generate something larger than what we could achieve individually. The third one is, is this notion of the path of least resistance. You know, the easiest thing to do is not to collaborate. I mean, it takes time, it's messy, it's hard, it's about relationships. You know, to do all of that is hard work. And so, you know, the easiest thing is to not even think about new partnerships or relationships. If I, finally, <clears throat> you know, I don't know of any successful force collaborations. You know, again, relating back to children, how, you know, how many times have we told our children, well, you're going to be friends with little Jimmy or little Jane, right? Kids form friendships and relationships through time and through trust and through uh, having appreciation for who they are and those individuals. You can't force it. It has to happen naturally. It has to happen naturally over time. So let me give you a couple of examples of some partnerships or collaborations that we've seen or we've helped to nurture uh, within our brief time of existence. The first is uh, the Michigan Bionatal Bi or Neonatal Biobank. Uh, it's a collaboration uh, that started a number of years ago. You know, every time someone is born in the state of Michigan, um, they prick the heel of the infant, they take a little blood draw, they put it on a card, they collect some information. The Michigan Department of Community Health uh, stores that information, right? Excuse me. They store that information, they put those cards, they file them away, they create millions of these, they had them sitting off in some storage facility. Nobody did anything with them. At some point in time, they said, you know, we can't continue to kind of collect all of these. It's costing us a lot of money. Why do we do this? And, and so a number of people starting to have a conversation, well, maybe we can use these for something, right? Maybe they actually could have some value. So a collaboration formed between the Department of Community Health, Michigan State, Wayne State, University of Michigan, the Van Andel Research Univ uh, Institute over in Grand Rapids. Now down at Wayne State University on that campus, there's millions of these pieces of information that now are stored. They've now been cataloged, characterized. They're now available to researchers to use to uh, look back over decades to understand things like uh, environmental issues like lead poisoning and mercury, uh, things like genetic testing in terms of disease. You know, from what had been really a repository of a lot of stuff, now there's something very positive coming from that. The second collaboration is this little collaboration that we've created with Business Leaders for Michigan, BLM. This is a group of uh, CEOs representing 80 of some of the largest companies around the state of Michigan. The CEO of that organization, Doug Rothwell, and I worked together for a number of years in previous jobs. We developed some trust and relationship between our two organizations now. We're building collaborations to try to better connect the great resources that exist at our universities with the needs of some of those large companies around the state of Michigan. So this past June, 40 CEOs, chief technology officers from these companies came together with roughly 40 or so deans and faculty members of our three universities uh, to talk about material sciences and how potentially the resources at the universities can address the needs of these industries and companies. Collaboration that we hope will grow into some bigger and better things. Um, but it's all about trying to create these relationships, uh, trying to understand that we have a common vision of what we're hoping to achieve, and then building these trusts, the trust and the partnerships to get there. And so let me end with just um, a quote that, that I thought was really fascinating. 
Uh, recently, um, I was at a conference, uh, a gentleman by the name of Dan Whedon, who is uh, a partner in one of the large advertising and marketing firms out in Portland, Oregon. They work with Nike and created the Just Do It um, slogan. They also uh, created the award-winning uh, Chrysler advertisement and promotion about imported from Detroit. He was speaking at the group and he was talking about uh, how he talks to their uh, team members and associates um, and he uh, talked about this quote. Walk in stupid every day because every day the world has changed. I mean, things that we thought were fact today are not tomorrow. Things that we assumed we knew today are different tomorrow. And so um, be open to new ideas, be open to new opportunities uh, because things change and we need to think about how we address those changes. Thank you very much.